So you're probably at least vaguely familiar with Trafalgar Square in London. It's this frankly beautiful spot that commemorates the Battle of Trafalgar, the British naval victory over France and Spain in the Napoleonic Wars. That was like 1805, don't quote me. Um, it was the Battle of Trafalgar. And since then, in more modern times, I think it was 1998, the there's one spot there that they essentially designated to be used for contemporary art displays. And so it's been used for just random crap because that's what so much of contemporary art is. But we're sort of always seeking out new lows, it would seem. And the latest one I can't really tell you about, I just kind of have to show you because I came across a video and if I've seen it, you have to see it. This is just how it works. Let's go. A new monument featuring hundreds of plaster casts of transgender and non-binary people has been unveiled on the Trafalgar Square 4th plinth in London. Mil veces un instante, or a thousand times in an instant, is a sculpture created by Mexican artist Teresa Margolles, which Yes, because I don't know what in the Game of Thrones degeneracy this is, but yes, it's the transgender faces. And no, they're not dead yet, as you're about to, you know, just in case you're wondering if it's like the, the faces of the dead. No, they're still alive, we just still have to look at them. But do you see something about them, like how unbelievably gendered they are? Like, you know, they don't need pronouns, you can just kind of tell what sex they are, just immediately. How about that? features the life mask of 726 trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people from around the world. The see, they, may, they might be gender non-conforming, but we can tell. We can tell. It's like, do you want to go stand next to all of those male faces, those like particularly ugly male faces. Um, no, not really. <laughs> not really on my to-do list. But do go on. Do go on and tell us what inspired this great work of art. The monument was inspired by the Mesoamerican tradition of Zompantli, a skull rack used to display the remains of war captives or sacrificial victims. Yeah, let's let's just pause right there, shouldn't we? It's an Aztec skull rack. That's what inspired this. Mexican artist um, because they used to put their, their dead on display and by their dead I mean like their war captives and sacrificial victims to their fake gods. So that's what this is about. It's kind of it's kind of interesting really that the symbolism here. I don't think it's actually what she thinks it is but it is interesting that they you know they reject Christian culture so much and consider it to be in some way uh, bad and vulgar, and yet they bring in some of the most barbaric pieces of Aztec and various different pagan um, religions. And I, I think I know that the symbolism that she's trying to put forth, that these people, you know, were in some way hurt, and they weren't, by the way, these are just people who are living as trans people. Um, she's trying to, you know, put, put that forth, but really, like, if these people are sacrifices to anything, it's to the new religion that encourages these people to live in self-destructive ways, right? Because the untreated gender dysphoria that is encouraged, I mean, that just leads to ridiculously high rates of suicide and, and other forms of, you know, despair, right? And then there's, of course, sex work, which so many of these people um, embrace, which is degrading, below the dignity owned, uh, owed to these people, but also, like, seriously dangerous. You want to talk about how so many of these trans sex workers die? Well, because sex workers in general are in a profession that is seriously dangerous. Anyway, let's continue. Margoyes, who is a former forensic pathologist and mortician, applied plaster directly onto the faces of the models, many of whom were sex workers. In let's see. I mean, it's like, it's not really the statement that she thinks it is. It's like, yes, so people who work in these um, areas are likely to meet gruesome and ill-timed demises. Like, yes, but there's people like me who don't encourage people who, do go, who go into sex work. It's the people like her who do encourage that, and then these people get seriously hurt. It's also people like her who encourage 
you know, these mutilations to take place, which people have profound regrets about for the rest of their lives and which are irreversible. It's people like her who encourage children uh, to take hormones that will result in lifelong infertility alongside other things like, you know, like um, the bones not properly developing throughout their bodies. And then they have to deal with the consequences of that throughout their lives, which leads to, you know, lifelong despair issues. Anyway, let's continue. The statement, Margoya said the monument was also a tribute to Carla Laborada, a 67-year-old trans singer and former sex worker who was murdered in Mexico nine years ago. She I tried to look into the actual story of uh, that particular woman. I don't know if it's actually a woman or a man because you can't tell with these with these reports. But there's really no record of her or him, who knows, uh, besides this particular pandering. So there's really no no story there that I can dig up and find out like what actually happened. Um, but again, you know, working in the sex industry is inherently dangerous and also, you know, is, it is degrading. I mean, it's not something that anybody should be encouraged to go into or should want to go into. It's something people do when they're desperate and despairing. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's boggling to me that we are moving towards a society that actually encourages it and rewards it and heralds it. She said, we pay this tribute to her and all the other people who were killed for reasons of hate, but above all, to those who live on. To the new generations who defend the power to freely choose to live with dignity. The master To live with dignity. Well, funny that you say that. Exactly how? I mean, that's, that's the question that I think we should be asking ourselves. Because if you're living with dignity, you're living as you were made. Right? You're respecting the body as it was given to you, you're taking care of it, you're doing you know, what you can, you're not working in an inherently degrading industry, you're not you know, um, treating yourself with poor dignity in the sense of like having multiple sex partners. Um, these are the things that they are encouraging while, while having the audacity to use the word dignity displayed on the fourth plinth until 2026 when they will be replaced by New York born artist Shabala LaSelf's Lady in Blue sculpture inspired by a modern every woman. A new monument. Yes, inspired by the modern every woman. That's um that's somehow that's that's almost as disturbing. Not quite, not quite, but almost as disturbing. There it is. Is that is that the modern every woman of today? Um I, I certainly hope not, but I think there's some people who would say yes, I suppose. But do you notice just how little artistic value is even in the uh, the the skull the skull st structure thing, the skull rack? That's what it was called, the Aztec skull rack. It had like no artistic value. It was just literally the use plaster on people's faces. It didn't even like smooth out the edges. There were no like particular expressions. There's nothing. It was just oh, here we are. We're just gonna follow the Aztecs, but do it with trans people you know um will have this little heralding of the degenerate or something um up there a cube that looks kind of like if you zoom out it looks like a meat tenderizer which honestly like i do get the symbolism there one could consider that artistic um <laughs> i suppose i don't think that's what uh the artist the artist was going for but but hey it does it does have something to say with it. I do think that uh, Mussolini's uh, facade was a better sort of rendition of this, certainly more, more artistic. But if you notice that like when you look at the the so-called art of these people who have, I guess, embraced uh, the woke uh, maximally, all of it is just hideous. Like really, you know, it's like you, you have this thing in Trafalgar Square, which itself is, is honestly like it, it's beautiful, it's artistic, um, and then there's this meat tenderizer um, of trans faces in it. And it's just like, it's this contrast of before and then now, like, you know, the old world and the new. And it, it's, it's objectively ugly and it's, of course, degenerate. But like, like it's, you would think that if they were pushing a political message, which they obviously are, they would also want to have some artistic value to it so that somebody who wasn't already in their camp could say, hey, let me, you know, care about that a little bit more. Let me look a little bit closer. But I don't think you want to look closer at that or far away because then it does the meat tenderizer thing. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> you're kind of in a bad spot looking at that. Um, I do think it's going to be kind of difficult to use as like a, a meeting spot though. You know, like, hey, can you, let's go, let's meet up later today next to the trans prostitute faces. Just doesn't really have like this ring to it. 
you know, like let's meet next to the Nelson um, monument or something. It just doesn't really kind of work. But honestly, when you look at stuff like this, you have to think, you know, what do they even support? Like the the, the support, what they're trying to to build is is simply vacant, right? It's it's the absence of beauty. It's the absence of good. It's the absence of dignity, and you see that in what they create. If you can call this creation, it seems to stretch the meaning a little bit. And so when I see things like this, I just kind of wonder. Well, well, I guess we don't have to sort of worry that much because nothing that they build can actually sustain. It just is sort of um, vacuous and void of foundation. So I guess you could consider that a victory. But I, I thought I'd go ahead and share that with you because I think it is so accidentally symbolic. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!